Chair, City, City 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 Council meeting. It is October 28th. It is um, four o'clock. And we are going to begin with um, the Pledge of Allegiance. You'll all join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, the Republic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The list here with um, our outgoing yet yeah, Mayor Pro Tem. Council member Jared Couch. Present. Uh, Councilman Owen. Councilman DeYoung. Present. Councilman McGoffin. Present. Councilman Allen. Present. Councilman member Kinzer. Present. And council and member. For not being able to turn on video due to my location today. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, and Council Member Kesty. Present. Um, so, Doug, I did not hear from Chuck Owen. Did you? Uh, no, I have not heard from him. Okay, so we'll watch him here today. We'll watch for him and see if he comes on. All right. I am looking for an approval of the agenda. Madam Mayor, I move to approve the agenda. Madam Mayor, Council Member DeYoung, second. Okay, I have a member by Council Member Kinzer, seconded by Council Member DeYoung. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, say aye. Carries. Consent agenda, items one through four, looking for a motion. Madam Mayor, Council Member Goff, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. Councilman Allen. We had a motion by Council Member McGoffin, seconded by Council Member Allen. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. We'll move right into um, staff reports and I'll begin with um, Fire Chief Cleaner. Good afternoon, Mayor Council. Uh, just to uh, bring up, we've had uh, just an increase in calls uh, and most of them are seeming to be a lot of mental health type issues. Um, it just seems to be it's a growing um, thing that's um, going in between us and the police department. But uh, as far as COVID numbers, uh, we're still about holding the same as where we were uh, last council meeting. So it's about all we have. All right, thank you. Um, police Chief uh, Tucker. Right, and just to clarify that mental health thing Dean was talking about is the people we're serving, not our individual departments, just to let you know. Um, so, um, I just got three things here. Um, we got word of a cell test um, on the uh, Friday at 4 p.m. at Heritage. Apparently, there is a. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Is anybody else hearing that? No, but you're it's cutting back through the mayor's mic. Yeah. And there, that's. Me. Yeah, Mayor, it seems like it's echoing from your mic. Councilman Allen, a lot of feedback too. There. All right, I'll try this again. Uh, we have a, a protest schedule for this Friday at 4 p.m. at Hammer Heritage Park. Um, we're getting word on that uh, there's a group that wants to protest the recent uh, or today's Supreme Court justice nomination. Um, about 20 students are looking at uh, uh, coming to do some sort of protest. We don't expect any issues. We don't have any extra staff on, but we'll be monitoring that. Um, we're getting a request from the auditor uh, for additional security 
um, just to keep an eye on the ballot boxes up until uh, the night of the uh, um, election until um, approximately 8 p.m. whenever they start uh, closing the ballot boxes and collecting all the ballots. So we're gonna be keeping an eye on that as well to see if it's necessary. And we're gonna put some guidance out on uh, uh, social media just for some guidelines of what uh, the auditors put out to us as well. And finally, um, we're gonna, uh, my Lieutenant and I are gonna head down to the Criminal Justice Training Commission down in uh, Burien and uh, meet up with four of our recruits who are in the academy just to check in with them, take them out to dinner, see what they're doing, see how they're doing in the going to the police academy during COVID and uh, just do a kind of a, just to check on them, just to see if they're not having too much fun. And uh, that's all I have. All right, thank you. And uh, let's move on to the IT director, Bill Chambers. Hi all, um, just plugging away on the email migration and hoping to get that all completed uh, for the switch over the uh, uh, end of the first week or second week of, of uh, November. Um, I believe there, Glenn said there are about uh, 15 doors left, I believe, uh, that need to be completed for the, the um, uh, key card door entry system. And uh, um, that's, those are the two main things that we're working on right now. All right, thank you. And I wanna make a note that um, council member has joined us. Hello there, Chuck, welcome. Moving on to finance manager, Jill Scott. Good afternoon, thank you. Um, just submitted a um, request uh, to the Department of Commerce for um, roughly $100,000 for the CARES um, Act funds, and we'll be continuing to work on that through the month of November. We have through um, November 30th to spend those funds and request reimbursement. i um, also been working on the GMT cost report and just a lot of miscellaneous um, requests for information and um, various things from staff members. Otherwise, that's all I have to report today. All right. Thank you, Jill. Uh, Building and Permit Director, John Coleman. Good afternoon. So, we've been spending a lot of time this week trying to clean up some uh, finance numbers, working with the finance department to clean up the, the bars accounting numbers, which is something that has uh, been probably needed for a while, which has taken a lot more time than would have expected. We also are putting the final touches on uh, processing a $16,000 grant for updating our Shoreline Master Plan Program. Uh, so that's our development regulations for areas of Shoreline, where the Department of Ecology is giving us a grant to that work. That'll um, be done in June of next year. So we'll uh, be using that money gladly. <clears throat> and then uh, I've got two agenda items uh, with the council tonight, so I'll be speaking with you more in just a little while. All right, thank you, John. And Public Works Director, Mark Freiberger. Mark, you're muted. Had to find myself on the list there. Sorry about that. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, we are continuing our work on uh, preparing a American Disabilities Act ADA transition plan. Uh, we did have the first meeting of our uh, advisory group on the 13th of October. That went well. And uh, we have a, a good engaged group uh, that are helping with uh, staff with that. Uh, and we also uh, have a meeting on November the 5th scheduled from 6.30 to 8. It's a public meeting that we are advertising. Uh, we have been, as you know, uh, publishing a, uh, a survey. Uh, and so we are reaching directly out to anybody that did, a, did respond to the survey and making sure they know about it. And we're also advertising that through our, our website and other various media outlets uh, to 
make sure the public, uh, if they want to participate, uh, can do so. And the information on that is on our website under resources if any of you are interested in looking at it. We're working towards having a plan in place by the end of March of 2021. So we've got a lot of work to do, but it's, it's coming along pretty well. Uh, you may have noticed over at the library, there's a lot of activity and some of it's got Cedro Woolley stickers on it now. We've been uh, preparing Rita Street for uh, paving. Uh, originally, they were planning to pave this Friday. And so we started the pulverization and, and grading for the street uh, yesterday. Uh, then we found out uh, today, I guess, that uh, we can't pave until next week. And so um, we're looking at having the street closed to through traffic for the next uh, week or so uh, and waiting for that. There's just too many utilities in the way uh, to try to leave it open. So just so so you'll know, uh, Dean and, and Lynn, that that's the case right now there. Uh, and we've created a path for the two residences that uh, are in that section of Rita Street. Uh, tonight, uh, we uh, met with the utility committee and talked about the sewer outlook. Carl will probably want to speak to that a little bit later, uh, but we are moving from that process into finalizing our sewer comp plan, uh, which John is working uh, to get approved as a part of the docket for this year. Uh, I believe there's a planning commission meeting on the 17th of November, and then you'll be seeing it in December at your, your meeting for a first read. And uh, we also have uh, uh, executed a contract for the rehabilitation of our Cook Road pump station. That work will start uh, as soon as we can get the pumps approved and get them on site. Uh, that's a fairly painless operation. We have to bypass pump for about three days while we do that. And we're gearing up for that effort. And that's all I had, Mayor. Thank you, Mark. Um, City Attorney, Vicki Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. And I don't actually have anything that is not of a confidential nature to share this evening. All right, thank you. And our um, supervisor, Doug Merriman. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Just a couple of items. Uh, one is the budget. We are on track for having a preliminary budget completed the first week of November, and we'll be bringing that forward to you so you can get a, a look at how the budget is for 2021 and 2022. Uh, other things that are going on, the state auditors are continuing their work here till mid-November sometime. So we are just steadily working with them in this COVID environment, trying to do audit is really interesting, but we're getting there. So uh, we'll bring you more information as we start getting to the close on the audit on the results and different things that we're looking at. Uh, one thing that you will be seeing coming forward pretty soon is council needing to approve our lodging tax grant applications. We have all the applications in, we'll be getting the committee together do those and make a recommendation to council. So that'll be coming forward most likely the second meeting in November. So I will put that on our calendar to have that discussion. And then from a staffing standpoint, one thing I'd like to do is if we have recruitments going on or different things there. I'd like to brief council on those just so you know what changes are going on uh, with staff in the city. We have someone on our meeting right now, Cheryl Brew, we have decided that retired life sounds a whole lot better than working life. Can't imagine why. But uh, she has been a longtime valued member of our staff, and she's looking at retiring here in December. So we do have an open recruitment right now uh, in just the first two or three days. We've had a little over 30 applications come in. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll be uh, going through those, waiting this out, and then doing the interviews and everything. Uh, to get a new candidate to come in and work with Cheryl for a few weeks uh, until the time that she goes. So other than that, that's all that I have for you today. All right, thank you, Doug. And um, moving into our council reports. And so um, Councilman Couch, I know that you wanted to take a few minutes because you wanted to um, thank a few people. And would you like to do that now or would you want to wait until later? 
Mayor, if uh, it would be okay with you, I would be happy to go last and check the reports, and I will I'll keep it brief so we don't drag this out too far. No problem. All right. So then we will move into Councilman Owen. Do you have anything to report? Hearing none, I'm going to take that as a no. Uh, Councilman DeYoung. Well, it's just a beautiful day here in Ward 6. Uh, great autumn day, seeing kids on their bicycles. Of course, after fin they finished up all their uh, Zoom meetings for school. And uh, it's just been a, a glorious day here in, in Cedar Willie in Ward 6. And uh, just wanted to just uh, take a note of, uh, um, just wanted to thank Council Member uh, Couch for the last 34 months of service on this council. I've appreciated his hard work and his passion on his issues. And I do look forward to seeing him in leadership positions uh, in the future and hope to be working on a team with him on issues that are important. And um, Jared, I'm going to miss you. All right. Thank you. Councilman McGoffin. Hi, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank Councilman Couch for his contributions and service. And I was bummed I didn't get to spend more time but I know you're going to achieve a lot moving forward, so best of luck. I'd also like to request uh, an excuse for the last meeting. I had a work permit that kept me later. Uh, for PM. Thank you. Adam Mayor, I would move that we approve Councilmember McGoffin's absence in the last meeting. Second. Second, Second Councilmember DeYoung. So I have a motion by Councilman Couch, seconded by Councilman DeYoung to absence of Councilman McGoffin at the last meeting, which I believe was October 14th. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, Councilman Allen. Well, Madam Mayor. Uh, oh, geez. I would like to thank Councilman Couch also. Uh, gee, I'm really sorry that we've been able to be together for like eight months in a real meeting. But anyway, he is a, a wonderful council person and we'll miss him. I hate Zooms. <laughs> Mayor, I believe you're on mute still. Council Member Kinzer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Cheryl Brew, I am really sorry to hear that you're retiring and I really thank you for everything that you've done for the city. You've been such a great asset to the city and such a huge help and you will really be missed. We appreciate you. Um, I, I want to bring to everyone's attention that there was a lot of vandalism done up at the Northern State Hospital Cemetery recently. I apologize for my dog barking. Um, really a lot of vandalism that's going to take a lot of money to repair at this point and makes me really sad. Pictures to the mayor and to Nathan and a lot of, it's, it's um, broken damage to the to the memorial that the students put up several years ago, and it's really, really, really disheartening. To see that, and I'm just hoping that we can find try to protect that area until we can utilize a grant that we have to really secure it. Um, I don't know. I I, I plead to all of you to drive up there. Northern State Hospital Cemetery and just make your present presence known up there to try to deter um, people from doing all this damage. It's probably happening at night. I don't know. I have no idea. We don't have any idea, but 
it's a lot of recent damage, far worse than what Nathan shared with us recently. So please, um, if you can take a few minutes out of your time, drive up there, make your presence known, let people know that we're we're looking out for that place because it means a lot to all of us. And um, Jared, we appreciate you. We appreciate everything you've done for the city. Your passion is amazing. Um, it's gonna be a great loss with you leaving, but this is just the beginning for you. And we really wish you the best in the future. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, this is Bill Chambers. Can I interrupt for just a second? Um, I believe that the interference, the, the feedback is coming from your microphone and speaker. Okay. So if you can be sure to mute yourself when you're not speaking, that will help. I'm trying to do that. I'm sorry. Okay. I will. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bill. And um, I think that was well stated, Brenda. I also want to mention, I think something that Nathan shared with Brenda and I had to do with the grant money. I wanted to know where on the list the fencing was um, supposed to go in up there. Um, Nathan said that they're because of the monies and how we receive them, um, we have to jump through a lot of hoops. We have to have an archaeological group come out and check it out. So it's a it's a it's a long drawn out process, and it looks like it won't be till spring of the year that we're able to possibly get that fence up. So um, I. I concur with Brenda. I, I echo what she has to say. If you have opportunity to um, go up there, make a presence known, that would greatly be appreciated. She's Thank absolutely you. right. How much that's done is it's horrific. I, I, I think it's horrific. It's terrible. Um, much worse than the last time. So, Madam Mayor, is, a, is there a way I can share all those photos with, with everyone without breaching some kind of Whatever. You can send them to a, maybe a couple people at a time or even send them individually to each one, but you can send them out. Okay, because I, I'd like everybody to know how bad it really is so that maybe people are more encouraged to go up there and make their presence known. I agree, I agree. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then council member Kesty. Madam Mayor, can I have a word with you, please? Um, well, I called on Council uh, Member Kesty. I'll let you talk right after she's through talking. Is that okay? Well, I uh, I had uh, my brother passed away this morning, and I would like to be excused from the rest of the meeting. I'm kind of Madam, Madam Mayor, I move the excuse of uh, Council Member Owen. Second. Madam Mayor, I second that. Um, oh, we have Thank you very much. Good luck to the young, um, Kenzer, Couch, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And oppose same sign. So very right. sorry. <laughs> Council member Kess. I'm very sorry, Chuck, about your loss. Um, well, I've got a couple things. So the chamber is in need of volunteers with ladders to help decorate the downtown poles with branches. Branches go up November 28th at 9 a.m. meeting outside the bowling alley. Wear gloves and warm clothing. There are 36 poles to decorate, so the more the merrier. And any questions, you can contact Shelby Brazier. Um, and I have her phone number here. Am I allowed to say that her, if people wanted to contact her? Has she made that public knowledge? Yeah. And you know, something else that you may want to think about doing Councilman Kesty is also um, sending that information to Bill Chambers and he can put it on our Facebook page. That's all. Perfect, perfect. Okay, Shelby Brazier and also, um, I'm sad to see Councilman Couch go, but I wish you the best of luck for all your future endeavors. And I know you're gonna do amazing things. That's it. 
Thank you. Okay. Aaron. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just want to take a couple minutes to, you know, thank a few people and, um, you know, from day one, even through the election, it was, uh, it was a nail biter, uh, getting, getting in and, uh, and even, uh, winning the seat. And I fully expected, um, to spend, you know, quite a, quite a few terms here. Uh, Cedar Woolley's always been home, uh, even though I was raised in Lyman, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to thank, you know, all of the council members. I appreciate um, every, everyone's kind words. Uh, like when I talked to Vince from the paper, you know, I said, this, this is a good group because we might not always agree on everything, but we, we definitely get business done. And I think we always try to do what we believe is best for, for the citizens. And, um, you know, I think sometimes a, a good, healthy disagreement is, uh, is, is needed. Um, so I want to, I definitely want to thank the council. I want to thank the community for, um, the support. Um, it was, I was, I don't think we've had until re in recent times, we, we haven't had very many younger council people. Um, and I think it's good to have, you know, a nice split in the group and it brings different viewpoints, um, from the community. So I want to thank the community for, for their support and their trust. And, um, I, you know, I said when I was running for city council that um, there was a few things that I really wanted to focus on and um, public safety and our first responders were a point that I always um, pushed hard for, you know, because when people pick up the phone on their worst day, they want a firefighter or a police officer to show up to their door. Um, and I, I think this council did a great job in um, passing proposition one in a time when many politicians are, are you know, pandering to the public and, and defunding the police, we, uh, Cedar Woolley did the right thing. And we, we supported our community and supported public safety. And uh, we're truly, we're blessed in Cedar Woolley to have, you know, great leadership within our um, fire and police departments and um, great staff. And that doesn't go for just those departments. We have phenomenal people throughout this city who continually um, do more with less. And, Sadly, um, that you know that's the Cedar Woolley way, but um, we, our staff, continually do what it takes to keep the city running. And um, I, I hope the department heads um, will send my thanks out to all of their staff. I wish I could leave in the same manner that I came in by going department to department, meeting people, and and hearing their needs. Um, I wish I could say my goodbyes, um, but. COVID is, uh, is, is not allowing for that. Um, I was, one other issue that um, I got an update this afternoon from Mark that I was pleased to hear is that there's a uh, good effort being made on the, the uh, public works and solid waste building. Um, it's an issue that Mark probably got tired of me asking about or bringing up, but um, I, you know, I wanted to push hard for that because when I toured and I saw a mechanic working on a garbage truck, laying a piece of cardboard over a mud puddle, I, I knew that that was, was not okay for Cedar Woolley. And I appreciate our staff working hard to make those things happen. Um, I don't wanna get long-winded because uh, Chief Tucker will come up with some snarky comment or, or say something to me about talking too much. <laughs> so, um, I, Mayor Johnson, I, I apologize if, um, for not giving you a heads up on this, but I did wanna ask um, the council for support on something as, as your Mayor Pro Tem um, I would ask that the council support me in um, me nominating Councilwoman Joel and Kesty to finish my term as Mayor Pro Tem. Well, okay. We can move forward with that. Is that a motion then on your part, Jerry? It is. All right. I so we, all right. So we have a motion made by Councilman Jerry Couch, seconded by Councilwoman Brenda Kinson to nominate to Will and Kesty, Councilman Will and Kesty as uh, Mayor Pro Tem. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Same sign. Congratulations. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, 
Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I appreciate it, everything. And uh, I think, like I said in the paper, uh, I, this probably isn't the last time that you'll see me in public office. So I look forward to, to seeing you all again and serving you. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jared. It's been a pleasure. Oh, I have the pleasure of actually going last. And, uh, and I, I want to say that everything that's been said about you, Jared, is absolutely true. You are going to be missed. You've been, you've been a huge asset on the council. You've brought things forward that other people haven't um, talked about. I will let you know that the Public Works Building, um, Chuck Owen actually brought that up um, shortly after he came on as council member too. It was something that he really wanted to see happen. So um, you're not alone in those um, concerns and efforts. Um, you know, Jared, there's so much that's lying ahead of you. You're intelligent. You have a uh, great rapport with um, a lot of people. And I know that you're going to be successful in whatever you choose to do. And um, I look forward to voting for you if it's if it's a council, some sort of a, um, county office or whatever it is. I look forward to voting for you. Um, we do have a plaque for you, Jared. We did get one for you. Um, and if uh, you will um, be so kind, I will let I will read it to you. And at some point, I will be able to give it to you. Are you actually here in the building right now? Uh, I am. I'm sitting in my seat for one last time. I, 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 I recognize the room, so I'm hoping that you won't go away so I can get this plaque to you at the end of the meeting. But it says, presented to Jared Couch, council member at large, January 1st, 2018 through October 28th, 2020. In grateful appreciation for your outstanding leadership, dedication, and commitment to excellence these past three years on the council and as acting mayor pro tem. You have positively impacted our community and made it a better place to live. With sincere gratitude and thanks on behalf of the citizens of Cedar Woolley, the city council, and myself, Mayor Johnson, thank you. Thank you, Jared, you're gonna be missed. Thank you, Mayor Johnson, I appreciate it. And I'll uh, note down that you're my first endorsement for future political office, thank you. All right. Yeah, so, Jared. Yeah. I think you'll get more than just mine, I'm sure, from this uh, council. And then just one last thing, I wanted to make everybody aware, if you haven't been, um, we had the groundbreaking ceremony for the Evaluation and Treatment Center, which is um, off of Highway 20 by the Life Care Center. Um, the uh, commissioners and I were out there, um, it's been a couple of weeks now, and we are looking forward to having this treatment center in place. As you've heard, you know, both, um, Chief Klinger and especially Chief Tucker talk about the great need, a place where we can, where we can actually place people who are in need. So this is, um, it's going to be happening. They are, like I said, breaking the ground. We're going to be building. Um, and uh, I, I look forward to that. And, and just to make you aware, uh, watch for the updates. Um, this is really going to be a good thing for our community. So with That's that, good. we Good news, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Okay, with that, um, we will move into public comments. I am, if Bill, if you'll work with me, I'm going to try to make this possible. Is there anybody who would like to make public comment at this time? I would need your name, your address, and I need you to keep it three minutes. It is 4.33, so I'm opening this up. Anyone who would like to make public comment? Okay, um, I actually have 434 now, so I'm going to close public comment. We did not receive anything um, that I am aware of uh, in, in the mail, so we will move on now to public hearing. And um, again, the time is uh, 4, uh, 434, and uh, I will open this public hearing for the purpose of considering proposed revenue sources for the 2021-2022 budget including possible increases in public tax revenues and utility rates. So again, if anybody would like to make um, a comment at this uh, public hearing, I need your name and your address and that would be appreciated. Is there anyone who would like to make comments? Oh, 
Okay, hearing none, Doug, I wanna know if you received any information. I saw where um, your name was listed for people to send their comments to. Is there any comments? I did not receive any. I did receive uh, one call. I talked with uh, Mrs. Helen Williams and she said she would like to come to the November 12th meeting to possibly make some comments at that time. All right. So that she is not on today. So hearing um, no others, it is 4.35. I am going to close this public hearing and um, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Ted. Okay, thank you, Mayor. So we have two different items tonight as listed on your agenda. The first is the 2021 property tax levy ordinances. And it's a little bit different this year. And as we've talked in the past, um, property taxes can be adjusted by the lower of the IPD, which is the implicit price deflator. That's a consumer price index type item, or 1%. Uh, so in years when the IPD is less than 1%, uh, you can still do the 1%. There's just a second step that has to be done. So this year is one of those years. The IPD is at 0.602%. So what this means is we do one ordinance that asks for the 1%, and then we have to do a second ordinance that says, okay, for us to go from the IPD to 1%, we're gonna list some of our substantial needs. So the ordinances you have, 1963-20 is the first ordinance, that's our typical ordinance, and then ordinance 1964-20 is the substantial need ordinance. So tonight, really the purpose was to hold the public hearing and then just introduce these ordinances to you. I put a cover sheet on those that's explained some of the dynamics and things that we're looking at. And then we'll bring this back on November 12th uh, to have the full presentation and discussion and the request of council to take action on both the property tax levy ordinances and the utility ones as well. So that's the first item. The second item is our utility ordinances. And as we heard in some of the comments earlier tonight, the city's utility committee met and we talked about in particular sewer and the requirements we have there. And in our sewer plan and in the capital improvement plan that we're doing, we noticed that we need a 2.3% um, change in our utility rates. Now, normally we would look at the consumer price index. It's at 2.474 for the year of the, what inflation is doing with our expenditures. But after our public works crew and Mark and I worked together, uh, we got to about the 2.3% mark and said, you know, we really don't need any more than that, even though the consumer price index is higher. We're trying to be really sensitive to rates in the community in that. So for sewer, stormwater, and solid waste, they're all coming in right about that same number. So there are three ordinances attached. We'll talk about these on November 12th as well. And they each include a 2.3% rate increase. And we'll have more of the details and things there in a full presentation on those at the second reading on these ordinances. But as I mentioned, this is just to introduce the ordinances to you. And between now and November, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. And if not, uh, I'll bring these forward on the 12th and we can have a good discussion at that time. And that's all that I have on these items tonight. All right, thank you, Doug. Madam Mayor. Yes. I had one comment for Doug. Um, Doug, is there a way for us to maybe beef up the our, I guess, public education on this um, process? Because it seems like every year, every time we look at this, we end up just getting, we get hammered because all people see are, um, you know, the, the city's raising taxes, you know, and it's, it's like, boom, we're raising property taxes and we're raising utilities and we're raising this, raising that, raising that, but um i guess I, I i and i don't have the answer i'm not i'm not trying to be critical of anybody i'm just it's a it's something that you always hear um 
you know, I, I just don't know how we can better put that out to people and try to help people help educate people on the why why we do it, if that makes sense. It does, Jared, and it's a very good question. And ever since I think it was Initiative 695 back around the year 2000, when the process changed and we had to do this, it's it's very tough because we want to be sensitive uh, to households you know, that are on fixed incomes and those things. Um, but at the same time, we have a fiduciary responsibility to um, still provide our level of service that we need to. Uh, we're not trying to store up money or have huge reserves, but inflation is not our friend. And uh, But it's hard to put that out there because each year it does sound like the city's just doing a new tax again. But I think you raised a really good point. You know, it might be one of those things where we break the curve a little bit here and do some public outreach um, to explain to the to our customers and our citizens why this is needed to be done and the effects of that so they see it. It probably won't make everyone happy uh, all the time, but I think the best thing to do is to communicate, 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 and you can't go wrong there. And I think that would help you all as elected officials too, uh, to have information that you can talk to your constituents about uh, so at least they can be better in, informed and we all kind of understand why these things are necessary. So like you, Jared, I don't have a, a definite answer, but that's definitely something uh, we can work on and put some information out. Questions and Good evening, you Madam. I can also I see ask a couple uh, questions, uh, Councilman uh, Allen? Just a moment, I want to on this. Just a moment. Um, I see where Vince Richardson is on the line and maybe you can meet with him and do some sort of an article. That might be helpful too, getting it out in the paper, just putting it out there. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Doug. All right, Glenn. Okay, uh, Doug, a couple questions. Uh, what is the most equitable uh, property tax increase and how many people and organizations and governmental uh, agencies are exempt from that tax and if we made it up with a utility tax where everyone paid it wouldn't be that much more but how many people are exempt from property tax like uh, state agencies uh, city agencies uh, federal agencies schools everything else is it equitable for everybody? And what is the most equitable? And I'll leave it in your hand, okay? Okay. You know, uh, it's a very good question, Glenn. And it's, you know, if, if you wanna ask me a question to get me excited, you just asked it. Um, because that equitable piece is a really important one. Um, property taxes, there is a lot of debate on for each person, is it a fair tax and equally distributed between different people with different household incomes and things like that? Um, property tax, sometimes uh, there's a lot of debate that is not as equitable as others um, because it's not based on spending. And you can be in a house that, uh, in fact, the, the lady I talked to this week, her uh, tax appraisal on her house went up 50% this year. Uh, she didn't change anything on her house. Uh, she's a widow on a fixed income. Um, so there are things that happen like that that people don't have control over. And it may not be a fair spread of tax across everybody. But that being said, uh, utility taxes um, are ones that it's based on spending more. And some cities, uh, you will see that property taxes don't even quite keep up with inflation because of the 1% limit. And if they don't have a lot of sales tax, then cities will go towards utility tax. And it's not unusual to see smaller cities that are not on I-5, say they're in Eastern Washington, they can have utility taxes you know, up above 20%. And it's just the decision they've made as a community on how they want to make their tax base more equitable. So there's not a clear and concise answer to that. 
Um, but those are just some of the different things that you have to consider when you're asking that question and trying to decide what's the best thing for Cedar Woolley. Okay, uh, Doug, a second question. Okay, I mean, on property tax, who is exempt and who doesn't pay in a utility tax? How many more people pay? I mean, do schools and stuff pay for property tax? No. Or you know, do federal agencies, state agencies, and would possibly a utility tax be fair to everyone? It's almost a user tax. That's my question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. And I, I understand your question. There are a lot of, in fact, I think you gave about as good a list as I could give of all the organizations that are exempt from property tax. Uh, you have housing authorities and some other as well that uh, have different ways where they don't pay property tax, but they pay a small amount. It's called payments in lieu of taxes. Um, but the main thing, if it's another governmental entity, there's a good chance they're probably not paying property tax. Uh, those same organizations uh, do usually have utilities and um, they will pay, you know, utility tax on their utility bills. As far as the total amount of whether it's equitable or not, um, I'd have to do a little bit more work on that and look at Cedro Woolley's tax base and just see um, where that falls. And council would have to make that decision as far as, you know, what they feel is fair and what the best way to approach that would be. Thank you. Thank you for your input. And, and also churches and not, you know, I mean, I'm not picking on anyone, but anyway, thank you, Doug, very much. And maybe if you can equate some of that into a future uh, scenario, that might help me out. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Glenn. All right. Good, good questions. Thank you. Um, we will let's see. We're moving on to unfinished business. The first thing we're looking at is a 2020 cemetery user fee. Uh, this is the second reading and I'm looking for some possibly looking for action on this ordinance. Um, Mark, are you, I don't see Nathan on here. Are you going to cover this? Yes, I'll cover this one, Mayor. Thank you. Um, so at the last meeting, we had a her first hearing on this. This is a proposed increase in the uh, cemetery rates. Uh, Nathan uh, carefully prepared a comparison of several agencies, which is attached to this. Uh, he's tried to be, you know, uh, in the in the range of the the spread of the comparisons there with these rates. Um, as was brought up by Councilmember Owen at the last meeting. Uh, these rates don't really cover the cost of operating the cemetery. Uh, so we have been uh, basically subsidizing these, these cemetery for, for many years, uh, and it has been growing fairly quickly over the last few years. I gave you some numbers in the updated memorandum that just talk about what the subsidy has been uh, from 2015 to 2019. Uh, the average yearly increase has been about 10%. Um, we're at, actually in 20, uh, 2020, uh, the budget was $83,086 and in 2021, it's budgeted the same. Um, the, the question was also asked, what uh, would be the impact of the proposed rate increase? And that's, that's about 12%. It's, it's a very variable thing, of course, when you're talking about basically users' fees. Um, they've been coming in uh, at a fairly good clip this year. That's, that, of course, equates to human tragedy, but uh, they have come in a little above uh, normal this year. But that 12% does represent about a $7,200 increase in fees on an average year. And, of course, that still doesn't cover uh, the entire amount of the subsidy, but it would reduce it by that amount. Um, so that's basically, I think... Uh, answers the questions that were raised the last time. Uh, we would appreciate uh, council moving forward with this. This would be a rate increase that would take effect. Uh, let's see, how did we set that up? Um, yeah, sorry, I don't know that answer. Um, 
anyway, uh, we would ask your consideration of, of moving this along to adoption. Are there any questions or comments for, for Mr. Freiber? It would be effective on January of 2021. Sorry about that. It took me a minute to get down to that point. It, it, is this please, someone, is this an issue we are going to vote on tonight? That would be my recommendation. Okay. And uh, can you, well, let me get a pen. <laughs> And I, I, this is Councilman Allen. I might be one of the first victims of the new rates, but I don't really care. What, it, what is the, the number of the? Oops, are you there? Are you looking for the ordinance? What the ordinance would be? The would ordinance be number. Yeah, nineteen twenty-eight dash twenty. Nineteen twenty. I'll make a motion that we adopt uh, ordinance 19 20. Second. Okay, so I had a motion by Council Member Allen, seconded by Council Member Couch to um, approve ordinance 19. 820 amending the city ruling municipal code chapter 2.80 to increase certain rates and charges for the city Willie union cemetery all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. although aye. i don't approve of an increasing any rates on anything right now i do have to approve Um, any opposed? Uh, same sign. Looks like um, we have passed Ordinance 1968 for the cemetery rates. Thank you, Council. Um, moving on to the amendments to Title 17, the Siege of Woolley Municipal Code, to address model homes. This also was a second reading, and this will be Ordinance 1969-20 if the Council decides to move on this tonight, vote on this tonight. So Mr. Coleman, you're on. Thank you. So uh, we, this is a second read. We discussed the uh, proposed model home ordinance a uh, fair amount at the, the last meeting. Um, I feel inclined to spare the council from rereading it to you and giving another synopsis. But if uh, anybody would like me to um, hit the highlights on this, I'd be happy to do so. Madam Mayor, this is Council Member DeYoung. Go ahead, Council Member. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to move for adoption. Um, oh, it just went away. 1969-20, which is an ordinance in the city of Cedar Woolley, Washington, adopting amendments to Title 17 of the Cedar Woolley Municipal Code to establish regulations for the construction of model homes in a subdivision that has not yet received final plat approval. Councilman McGoffin, second. Okay, we have a motion by Council Member DeYoung, seconded by Council Member Goffin to approve Ordinance 1969-20, um, um, amending uh, amendments to Title 17 of the Secret William Municipal Code addressing model homes. Um, any more discussion? Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Moving on to our new business. Oh no, we have one more unfinished business. It looks like we have the um, RCO uh, LWCF grant match certification. So, Mark, are you gonna are you covering this? Yes, I will. Thank you, Mayor. So, as Council knows, um, uh, Nathan Sassin, our our uh, uh, public works operations supervisor. Uh, applied for two grants uh, to support the development of the Olmstead Park. Uh, the first one was a uh, land and water conservation fund grant through the Rural Conservation Office. Uh, and the other one, I don't remember what the acronym was, but it was an R WWRP uh, grant. 
Uh, both of those were for $500,000 to support the 1.307 million estimated development cost uh, for uh, Homestead Park. Um, we also have a commitment of $400,000 from the Port of Skagit, uh, plus some inclined labor and materials to make up that total. When, uh, when the uh, selections were announced, uh, we, we were in the uh, uh, field where it's fairly likely we will be funded for the LWCF grant, but we were not, uh, were not re recommended for award for the WWRP. Uh, that does leave a $500,000 shortfall in our budget for the project. Uh, RCO uh, requires that the agencies that are uh, likely to be recommended uh, for award uh, pass uh, or basically a resolution that uh, certifies the applicant a match for the project. And of course, that creates a bit of a problem for us. Uh, they also uh, require that that match be, be adequate for the entire scope of work applied. So we've been uh, scrambling, uh, looking to see how we might come up with the additional funds. Uh, we have basically two avenues we uh, have identified. Uh, the one that's uh, actually recommended is to uh, allocate additional account 311 parks impact fee funds to make up the difference. And I've given a, a breakdown of how that would happen uh, the total local part of this is $807,000. Uh, we have the $400,000 from Port of Skagit. Uh, we have already budgeted $113,000 for the sanitary sewer improvements at the site. Uh, we have $197,000 in, in account 311 park impact fee funds at this time that are, that are in the account. Uh, that would leave us uh, short uh, after discounting the uh, donated labor and material, 72,000. As I described in the memo, uh, the park impact fee fund is a $1,500 charge per uh, residential unit on uh, development in the city. Uh, and that's been coming in at a pretty good pace. Uh, I summarize on the second page of where that's looking. Uh, with the number of units that we're projecting for uh, the rain remainder of this year and then into next year, uh, we're anticipating that there will be somewhere around 156,000 additional units uh, by the end of 2022 when this, this uh, project will actually be built. Um, that equates to about $234,000. Now, there's no guarantee on that, of course, uh, but we do see uh, the uh, BYK development is, is under construction out on McGarrigal Road with 64 units, I believe, or excuse me, 85 on that one. Uh, and then we have another one up on uh, between Jones and uh, FNS Grade Road that has another 26, I believe. So between those two enough, we, we can expect that more than enough funds will come into that uh, fund over the next uh, months, a year or so, to make up that additional 72,000. So what we're proposing to do is to uh, go ahead and, uh, and, and our finance manager, Doug, Merriman will need to sign this to, uh, to certify that we have the funds available uh, to match the project if it is awarded by the legislature in, in their session uh, this spring. In addition to that, we look to see what else we might be able to do to reduce the uh, impact on our, our funds. And we do see there's a, a number of cost savings, which I've outlined in bullet points on the second page of the memorandum. And those, thank you, Bill. Uh, those are uh, the first one, the admin architecture and engineering amount of the budget was $215,000. We have already completed the engineering and architectural design to about 75%. Uh, and so we're thinking the final design, uh, a generous allowance for that is about $100,000. So there's about $115,000 remaining from that, uh, that amount that we budgeted there that we, we may well be able to save. Uh, we would still, if it did come in less than that cost, uh, we would still be uh, meeting the requirements of the grant because we would still be building the entire scope. So 
we don't know for sure we'll save that much, but it looks pretty good for that. Uh, also, permitting was budgeted at $50,000. We think that's extremely generous as well. Uh, the site preparation in the engineer's estimate is $507,000. We're thinking we could easily save 10% of that on what we see in the project. And then the final thing is the restroom was budgeted at $100,000. Uh, we've been building those with our own forces the last few years for around $50,000. That one's a bit of a stretch on this because with the rules for uh, self-performed work, we typically have to look at them as a, a project account, uh, a project uh, total. And in this case, with a $1.3 million uh, grant, uh, it's probably questionable whether we could do that uh, with our forces because it is considered a part of the overall project. But it is a place that we might be able to save if, if we had to. So we think we're, we have enough funds in the park impact fee to move ahead with authorizing uh, Doug to certify this and send in that paperwork. Uh, that is the next step for us to be awarded the funds and that is due, uh, as I noted in the memorandum by November 2nd. So we do need to act on this tonight if council is willing to move forward. Um, so there is a at the top of the memo, and so we appreciate the consideration. If you have any questions? I have a be question. Glad. Yes. Go ahead. Is Are we ready for questions? Yes. Go ahead, Councilwoman Kinzer. Okay. Um, this is a little off topic, but yet it is on topic. Um, what is the status of the Omni? Omniprocessor um, production on site on Northern Mark. State. That is Actually, I haven't heard any new news on that for several months. Uh, the last that I talked to uh, Stanley Janicki at uh, Cedron, they were building a, a second uh, version of the uh, uh, Omniprocessor in Indiana. Um, they had just started that at that time, and that's been two or three months ago. I, I actually don't have an update on that. I could get one uh, for you for the next council meeting. It's probably time for me to talk to them anyway. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you, Mark, because it does, but yet it doesn't affect the whole big picture. So I would like to know what the status of that really is. Yeah, that's certainly a key element of uh, the development of the SWIFT Center. So yes, it is yes. sort of. Yes. Thank you. Madam Mayor, um, I would, uh, I guess I want to just kind of hear from Doug on the the finance part of it. It just seemed, um, yeah, it seems, it seems like we were a little iffy on, we think we have the funds. Uh, if Doug, if you could kind of break down the numbers part of it for us a little bit. Sure. Uh, as far as the funding goes, the, as Mark mentioned, we have the commitments from Port of Skagit for the $400,000. Uh, the sewer fund of $113,000, that's the sewer fund's contribution, and we have that built into the budget already. Uh, park impact fees are monies that we have on hand of $197,000, and so we're good to go there. Uh, the one area, the $72,000 in park impact fees that is when I will talk to Mark a little bit more on this one, uh, just to make sure uh, on what the certification language is. We have other funding sources we can use to balance that out if our park impact fees say uh, coming in since October 22nd are not sufficient by the time the project is done. So that's one kind of moving target we have with there a little bit. And then Mark has talked about the donated labor and material. So we have the capacity to do these. We'll have to keep an eye again on the park impact fees. I know we do use those for other things there, but it, if our revenue keeps up and we're looking at the different parcels that are coming into the city over the next year or two, we should be fine in our park impact fee fund. And all that information is listed on the front page um, of the packet regarding our CEO, if you wanted to confirm that and have that in hand when having discussions with others. 
So are there any questions, other questions or concerns that council would like to address at this time? Yeah, Madam Mayor, uh, uh, Councilman Allen, will we have, uh, do we have to do something on this tonight or can you come back with more definitive numbers in two weeks on, you know, whether we have extra funds or anything? Well, the, the date that we have to have the certification into RCO is November 2nd and we won't be meeting before then. So we basically we have to act on this tonight or uh, forego that $500,000 grant uh, for uh, the Olmstead Park development. I'm sorry to put it on this short notice, but that's basically what, we only got this a week ago uh, and we're told this is what we need to do. But the $500 grant would put us over 1.2 million towards the project. <laughs> Yeah, basically, it's a $1.307 million project. Uh, we have uh, basically uh, the Port of Skagit funds for $400,000, the sewer funds that are budgeted for $113,000, and the donated materials for $25,000. Uh, we have uh, already in our Parks Impact Fee Fund $197,000. The amount that we cannot definitively say that we have in that fund right now is $72,000. But as I'm uh, describing to you, we're pretty sure we'll be able to reduce the cost of the project by that amount and more. Uh, but in the in the other interim, uh, we do project project that we will have enough connections, more than enough con connections over the next two and a half years uh, or two years to uh, fund that seventy-two thousand dollars that we don't have cash in hand for. Adam Mayor. Yes, Councilman Kelly. Uh, given just, I guess, Doug's um, explanation on being, you know, keeping a close eye on the, the numbers, I would move to authorize City Administrator Doug Merriman to sign and submit the attached certification application to match for Olmstead Park Development Project. I'll second that. Okay. Councilman Allen. I have a motion. Councilman, Council, Councilman Allen to um, authorize our city administrator to sign and submit the attached certification for the grant. Um, any more questions, discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay, good. All right, well, I think this is gonna be an exciting project. And um, um, as you all know, our team, the Public Work Parks team, they're a great team and they've made some real miracles happen. Um, I think we're gonna be pretty pleased with what we see in a couple of years from now up there at Olmstead Park. Okay, with that, we will move on to new business, the proposed annexation, uh, properties at the Southwest corner of Township Street and Bassett Road. Um, Director Coleman. All right, thank you. So uh, again, Council, we have a annexation request. This is different from the uh, the one that we discussed uh, recently. Um, this is a request for about a 20.6 acre annexation uh, along Township Road, uh, just south of Bassett Road. It's actually the property directly north of the fire station too. Um, this property was actually already requested for annexation in 2017 and we went through the process and at that time council wanted to include other properties nearby to uh, create a much larger annexation and that ended up taking a considerable amount of time to Draw to figure out who wanted to be part of that annexation and um, then actually get the boundaries drawn, uh, the proposed boundaries, and go through the process. And the council did approve that, um, and then it went to the Boundary Review Board, and the Boundary Review Board said it took too long, so they kicked it back to us. So where we're at now is the 
property owner of the original annexation request has again requested to have their property annexed. Um, and since the last process uh, took a long time and uh, they still haven't moved forward, what staff is recommending is that we just process their annexation as uh, as they're just their three parcels that, that they're requesting instead of trying to expand it. Um, this would move them along much faster than they uh, that's that's what we recommend. The property itself is um, is mostly field. There's uh, it's zoned R5 for most of it. That's the residential five zoning, and then the property portion of the property, about six acres, that front on township, are zoned mixed commercial. So if you recall from the, the last time we had an annexation initiation request, there's a few uh, few things that we have to address at this meeting for state statutes. Those issues are uh, laid out on the memo under uh, right there under issues. And uh, again, in this memo, what I've done is I've uh, described the staff recommendations for each of those issues, and, and we'll we'll go through them one by one. And if the council wants to discuss before making a motion, that's how we uh, I'll be able to answer your questions as we move through these three different questions. So, the the first question is 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 the city interested in um, in accepting a, an annexation petition from Valley High Investments? Uh, at all, and staff recommends yes. Uh, we've already, you know, the council already did approve did approve uh, this annexation at one time, so there's no nothing has changed. Uh, we just hit a procedural error, so we'd like to move forward again. So uh, the first question is: uh, should, the, should the city accept, reject, or geographically modify the proposed annexation? And like I like I explained, we'd also uh, Request that they that the council not re, uh, geographically modify the proposed annexation. Just uh, rec recommending that the council make a motion to continue the proposed annexation process requested by Valley High for the three city for the three parcels that they have requested. And there's a motion in bold on uh, page 126 of the packet. If there's any questions. Uh, I realize I went through this pretty quickly, but I feel like the council's kind of got a handle on this, so I didn't want to. Madam Mayor, detail. this is Councilmember DeYoung. May I ask a question? Okay. Seeking to get recognized, so you ask a question. I'm sorry, I, I did think. I did recognize you. I don't know if it came oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you or, or notice. Um, Zoom, it's a new reality. Um, I just wanted to make sure that this was contiguous um, annexation, that we're not skipping over any blank spots. And I, I uh, just want to make sure I'm interpreting the data correctly that uh, this is the spot uh, directly north of Fire Station 2, just uh, south of Bottomless Lake, and that this uh, would not. Uh, put any gaps into what the uh, city limits that we already have. Is that correct? Thank you. Yeah, that, that's a good question and a good point. No, th this property is entirely contiguous to city limits. In fact, it makes a very nice uh, uh, boundary. Um, you know, when when we look at annexations, we look for logical boundaries. This, uh, with just these three parcels, it makes a very logical boundary. It goes from the, the the property is adjacent to the city limits and then goes up north to Bassett Road, which makes a nice dividing line. Um, so it, it makes it for very logical boundaries. Hey, John, can you expand just a little bit on the, um, the mixed commercial part? So with that, I believe you said six acres. So that six acres, when it's mixed commercial, does that mean it has to be 
like first floor commercial and then apartments above or how how does that work with houses being like a mixed commercial it seems six acres seems like a lot of mixed commercial yeah um bill if we could put it on, pa on page 131 that shows the map including the proposed uh zoning designation and these zoning designations were uh created through the comprehensive plan and um our urban growth area expansion process back in 2016, which this property owner worked with us on. Um, the idea was the basically everything east of the creek. Um, there, there's, there's, uh, it's not a super steep creek in this area, a steep bank creek, but um, it's about six acres east of the creek to Highway 20. It seemed like a logical place for commercial development. So that was put in uh, the comprehensive plan as uh, mixed commercial use. So, you know, you'd envision like a small convenience store, gas station kind of uh, commercial node to serve the growing residential properties in the area. Um, what's allowed in six the acres? answer to your question? To answer your question, the what's allowed in the mixed commercial is exactly that. It could be commercial uses, and residential is allowed um, above a commercial use. You know, if somebody were to do probably not a gas station with the with mixed with the residential above, but if there was maybe you know a, a commercial building, then you could have up to eight units above um, the commercial. I have concern with that. Who is speaking, please? Sorry, Councilman Kesti, Councilman Kesti um, with the gas station going up amongst like the, with the homes um, zone for five. Where would that, where's the zoning for the five? So, you know, a gas station is just one example of something that could happen in the mixed commercial zone. Um, the, the residential component, the residential part of the property is on the west side of the creek. And if you, if you look at the map, you can see the, the creek um, go through the property. And, uh, you know, as far as what it's zoned, that was all. That was all reviewed uh, as part of the comprehensive mapping process. It, um, it it's illustrative of what could be allowed uh, if annexed, but um, it's not really something that is part of the annexation process. Uh, one of the nice benefits of the Growth Management Act is you get to do your uh, comprehensive planning ahead of time, and then when it annexes in, you don't have to go through all the fight of what should it be zoned. It's already been uh, pre-reviewed and understood that it would come in uh, with this zoning. But there would be, uh, between the commercial and the, the residential properties, there is a creek which would have a buffer area. Um, so they wouldn't be on top of each other. Uh, uh Councilman Allen, is there a uh, limit on how long the mixed commercial can be and then it has to be residential? I mean, is there a 10 year uh, sundown or I mean, is there any, are there any restrictions? No, um, the zoning is what it is unless someone were to request to change the zoning and then it would go through the comprehensive plan review cycle again, uh, which goes through the planning commission and then city council. Uh, but that would <clears throat> that would be a, a separate process. Uh, Councilman McGoffin, I have a question, Madam Mayor. Yes, go ahead, McGoffin. So looking at the property, it looks like there's a pretty heavy power line that goes through the residential area. Um, has anybody looked at what restrictions there would be on building around that or underneath it? So that's the same power line that goes through um, by uh, 
uh, over by the Alderwood Road and then crosses across the, um, the parking lot of Fire Station 2. Those, I believe, have a 100-foot um, uh, easement, but uh, you, you wouldn't be able to allow, wouldn't, they wouldn't be allowed to build houses like, underneath of the power lines. Those are not the same as the big BPA ones that go over by the golf course. Um, they're they're a smaller, but still a regional. Uh, they're regional transmission lines, but they're much smaller than those the big ones that um, go through by the golf course. It's a separate subset of those. But there are restrictions on what can be built in the uh, in that power line easement. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, my last question will be, is there a reason that we're, um, this is, a, so this is under new business, but we're requesting action tonight. Is the reason for that? So because these are, gover um, these this meeting with the, um, with the annexation initiator, who I should also mention is uh, on the Zoom meeting with us. Uh, and if you want to hear from I, I'm aware of that. You're welcome to. Um, the, the state statutes are that the city council have a meeting about um, the annexation with the, with the initiator and the city council to, where is to make a uh, make recommendations uh, as uh, as I've laid out in the in the memo. So um, it sort of implies that if you have one meeting and that it gets done. It, seems uh, it, it seems to kind of supersede the two two meeting rules so we try to keep these to to one meeting madam mayor councilwoman Kinzer may I make a motion yes go ahead I make motion to continue the proposed annexation process requested by Valley House Investments Incorporated for three parcels north of the city limit. Council Member DeYoung, second. So we have a motion by Councilwoman Kinzer, second by Councilman DeYoung to accept the proposed annex uh, properties at the southwest corner of Township and Bassett Road. Um, so John, I have a question for you. Do you need A, B, or C to go with this, or do you want that to be determined after the council accepts? Um, they kind of follow each other, so it's good to have different it's clear in the minutes as required by the statutes. All right, so um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? I oppose. Uh, Council Member Kesty. Right. We have one Council Member Kesty. And Councilman Couch. Sorry, I raised my hand. And Councilman Couch. So, but uh, we do, uh, let's see here. So that would, so we still, we still have a majority here. <laughs> Adding and subtracting. Um, so looking at this, you want us to go through the A, B, and C separately, John, or as as a group? Well, that that was A. So now we can move on to B, which is, um, and then then we can move on to B after. But you need you need the council to accept B before we can move on to C, correct? Yeah, that'd make it easy. Madam Mayor, this is Council Member DeYoung. Yeah, I was looking for a motion if the council determines the city shall accept a petition to annex, if the city require the stimulus, the simultaneous adoption of a proposed zoning regulation. So any comments, questions, discussion? Madam Mayor, this is Council Member DeYoung. Councilman DeYoung. I move that the council uh, determines the city shall accept a petition to annex and the city requires a simultaneous adoption of the proposed zoning regulation. 
Madam Mayor. Councilor and I'll second that. I have a, a motion by Councilman DeYoung, seconded by Councilman Allen, um, for this to require a simultaneous adoption of the proposed zoning regulation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Nay. So, um, Motion does carry with the two oppositions or the two opposing Councilman Couch and Councilwoman Pesky. Um, moving on to C. Did the city require the assumption of all or of any portion of existing city indebtedness by the area to be annexed? Do I have a motion? Trying to find it here. Madam Mayor, uh, Councilman, I make a motion that the city require the assumption of all or of any portion of existing city indebtedness area to be annexed. I second that. Oh, I have Councilman. A motion. I'm a, by Councilman. McGoffin, second by Councilwoman Kinzer. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed, same sign. Yeah. Nay. Nay. So, um, you opposed Councilman Kesty uh, and Councilman Couch. Motion passes for the city to require the assumption of all or any of the portion of existing city indebtedness by the area to be So there you are, John. You have your annexation. Thank you very much, Councilor Mayor. Okay, one more item. We have a late item. I don't know if any of you it um it was on the website but it is the um city of seattle cooperative purchasing agreement the north end truck equipment um and this is surplus resolution 1059-20 if passed tonight uh director freiberger would you like to cover this for the council How about City Supervisor Doug Merriman? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I think Mark is muted and may not realize it. I was talking to myself again. Sorry about that. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so this, this item was meant to be on the uh, consent calendar, but didn't make the, the cutoff date. We would like to move ahead with this, however. Uh, we have in our uh, ER&R Equipment Replacement Repair Fund uh, the purchase of a new bucket truck to replace the one that we've been using for quite a few years. It was a used unit when we bought it. It's gotten to the point where we cannot obtain parts for it any longer. And so it's getting very difficult to maintain. Uh, so we uh, are proposing to buy one uh, from North End Equipment through the Seattle City of Seattle uh, Cooperative Purchasing Agreement. Uh, there, there are three separate motions that would make this possible. Uh, the first one is we would have to execute uh, the cooperative purchasing agreement with the city. This is similar to what we do with the city of T C uh, Tacoma for purchasing our solid waste vehicles. And uh, the second item uh, for your consideration is the purchase order to actually procure the bucket truck. And the final item is a uh, authorization to surplus uh, the existing truck. Uh, our budget for this in the ER and R is $150,000. Uh, the state uh, purchasing agreement that we normally go through for this unit is $185,000. So there's a significant cost savings by buying it uh, through the city of Seattle's agreement. Uh, 
their price with tax is 153,000, which is roughly uh, what we budgeted. Uh, and once we sell the existing truck, we'll be we'll be in good shape on that. So we would like to move ahead on this. Uh, it would require those three separate motions uh, if council is amenable to that. Uh, and uh, the reason for the, the somewhat urgency on this is that uh, we want to get this purchase done before the end of the year. Uh, and uh, North End does have one of these units sitting on the lot. Uh, there's no guarantee it will be there much longer. Uh, so we'd like to lock that in before, uh, before too much longer. Are there any other cities that we could partner with other than Seattle? <laughs> Well, that's, that's the one that North End uh, has the uh, cooperative agreement with us, uh, and we're not aware of anybody else that does with North End. Madam Mayor, this is uh, Council Member DeYoung. Yes. Uh, I move to authorize uh, Mayor Johnson to sign the attached cooperative purchase agreement with the City of Seattle. All right, is there a second? Second. I second that. Any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor of authorizing uh, Mayor Johnson to sign the attached cooperative purchase agreement with the city of Seattle signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, same sign. Um, Councilman McGoffin, I, I see your hand is up. And so I didn't know if that was a vote or just your hand was up. Uh, sorry, that was unintentional. Uh, I voted yay. For this. Okay. All right. So motion carries. So the second is a motion to authorize the public works director to issue the attached purchase order number 2020 PO22 for the purchase of a 2019 Ford F. Uh, 550 bucket truck in the amount of $153,005.83 from Northland Truck Equipment of Snohomish County. A motion. Madam Mayor, I will to authorize the City Public Works Director to issue the, the attached purchase order 2020 for the 2019 Ford F550 bucket truck, one fifty three oh eight three from North End Truck Equipment of Snow Mish, Washington. Councilman McGoffin is on. And is seconded by Councilman McGoffin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same. All right, motion carriage. And the last is a motion to authorize Mayor Johnson to declare as surplus equipment as listed on attached resolution 105920 and offer the item for sale to the highest bidder as trade in on new units or for disposal if no offers received. Do I have a motion? Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, go ahead. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, I'm Councilman McGoffin. I move to authorize Ma Mayor Johnson to you declare the surplus equipment as listed on attached resolution uh, 20 and offer the item for sale to the highest bidder as trading uh, or for proposal of no offers received. I have a second. Second. Council Member DeYoung seconding. Sorry, I didn't get to the mute button fast enough. <laughs> All right, so I have a motion by Councilman McGoffin, second by Councilman DeYoung, as stated by Councilman McGoffin in um, his motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 My apologies, I was a little here. Opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. I do not see anything else on the agenda. If I am incorrect, please pick up. Um, let me know. Yes, Madam, Madam Mayor. Could you wake up uh, Chief Tucker, please? <laughs> you look awake. All right. Madam Mayor, this is uh, Council Member DeYoung. Okay. 
just a point of personal privilege. I've really uh, appreciated Cheryl's service as, as our clerk and taking the minutes. It uh, can come fast and furious, and I always appreciate the accuracy and, and integrity that has been displayed. And I wish you well in retirement. All right. We still have, we still have her for a few more meetings. So, yeah. So, thank you for that. Um, so just one last thing, a reminder that our next meeting will start at six o'clock. It'll be from six to eight. Um, it'll be next week, November 4th. And um, what we're gonna be looking at in our work session are the directors that will be coming in, they'll be talking about their projects and their budget. So um, to give the council, provide the council more information on just what it is that they're doing and what they need. Um, and that is it, but before we close, just one last thanks to um, our now former council member at large and former Mayor Pro Tem, Jared Couch. And uh, thank you so much, Jared, for your service. So, thank you very much, Madam Mayor, and I'll see you all in future public comments. Thank you, Jared. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor, to confirm. Next meeting will be at 6 o'clock p.m. next that is that is correct. Yes, it is. So, and that will be um, our present time. All right. So, congratulations, Councilwoman Kesty, our new mayor pro tem. And I hope all of you have a great evening. Thank you for a good meeting. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you.